The city of Cordoba is more than 5,000 years old. The oldest evidence is transferred to Calcolithic, approximately 3,000 years before Christ. Cordoba has been capital in Roman times, and later capital of Al-Andalus. It was a very important city in the Visigothic era, although it later became the capital of the Emirate and capital of the Caliphate. All this mixture has left an impressive material, an archaeological heritage, that few cities in the Western Mediterranean have, except probably Rome. 2,000 years ago, the first Roman troops that arrived in the south of the peninsula settled on the right bank of the river, which at the time was known as Betis. General Claudio Marcello officially founded the city in the 2nd century before Christ, at the foot of a mountain rich in its minerals and surrounded by a valuable countryside. The site was undoubtedly ideal for creating an authentic Roman series. Soon, Cordoba, as the Romans called it, reached the title of Colonia Patricia, with two forums, important temples, amphitheater, aqueduct and circus. The Vedic province encompassed the entire territory around the Guadalquivir River and was the main oil producer in times of empire. Down the river came ships of low draft that were loaded with all the riches of Sierra Morena, minerals, metals of high value, and, above all, oil and wine. The destination was the port of Ispalis, the poor in Seville. In 711, the Visigoth kingdom was divided between two candidates fighting for the title of King of the Visigoths. In the same year, troops of the Omeya Caliphate, composed of Arabs and Berbers, crossed the Strait of Gibraltar, led by Tariq, lieutenant of the governor of North Africa, who took several cities from Cadiz to Toledo or Zaragoza. From 716, the peninsula was directed from Cortuba, Cordoba, by a governor appointed by the Caliph of Damascus. The first governors, apart from organizing the Islamic State and settling Arab, Syrian and especially Berber immigrants, carried out expeditions against the Frankish kingdom. In the territory of Al-Andalus, Muslims respected the Christian and Jewish population in exchange for a tribute, or belonging to one of the Abrahamic religions, which gave them a certain status. These circumstances motivated a policy of capitulation pacts, where many Visigoth aristocrats were able to retain properties and even some degree of power through new formulas. This fact, together with the fact that a part of the population Unitary and Hebrew Christians above all, saw with good eyes the new Muslim power that freed them from the hard oppression that the Visigoths had exercised against them. This could explain the spirit of the Moors to conquer the area. Plaza del Potro In one of the most popular squares in Córdoba, a fold proceeds over the fountain. Since the 15th century, there is written mention of this place as a sale of cattle. Here, horses and mules were herded, and there was a source for animals to drink. Thus, at that time, the oldest hotel establishment in the city opened, La Posada del Potro. Cervantes himself stayed at the inn several times. Even the horses have their cathedral, wrote Federico García Lorca, surprised by the size of the building, the stables, and the royal stables. Caballerizas Reales Felipe II, a great lover of horses, ordered the construction of the royal stables, thinking that it was the ideal place for the birth of a new lineage, the Andalusian horse, pure Spanish race. Plaza de las Tendillas On a magnificent horse, the sculptor of Córdoba, Mateo Nuria, immortalized Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba, the great captain, who went down in history for his participation in the most important contests of the time. This monument is located in the Plaza de las Tendillas, in the old explanade that occupied the Roman Forum. El Alcázar In 1482, the Catholic monarch moved the court to the Alcázar during the siege campaign to the Kingdom of Granada, the last Islamic stronghold. And in the 16th century, the king, Alfonso XI, completed the construction of the old Caliphal Palace of the new fortress in honor of Alfonso X, the Ten, El Sabio. The function of the Alcázar was clearly defensive, as well as dignified palace and residence of kings. 
It was here that Christopher Columbus was able to expose in detail to the advisors of the monarchs the magnitude of his expedition to the Indies without knowing that he would soon discover a new world. Jardines del Alcázar To have a relatively complete view of the gardens of the Alcázar, we must go back to the time of Julius Caesar himself, who personally planted various floral species and exotic trees such as the eastern banana. This tree is characterized by giving a white shadow, so it would help to make the temperature of the gardens softer. In the Arab era, the ones we know today began to take place. They were located in the southern area of the enclosure, occupying the most western areas. The purpose of its layout was to complete the space for the royal harem in the closest place to the Mudejar royal baths, finishing the final space with an orchard. It is through that the work could begin in the time of Abderrahman II, specifically in the year 822. Puente Romano The complex formed by the Roman bridge, the bridge gate, and the Calahorra Tower was declared a site of cultural interest in 1931. Since 1994, it has also been part of the historic center of Córdoba that was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Also known as the Old Bridge, the Roman bridge built in the first century before Christ over the Guadalquivir River was the only bridge that Córdoba had for 20 centuries until the construction of the San Rafael Bridge in the middle of the 20th century. The Roman bridge, currently composed of 16 arches, although originally 17, with a length of approximately 250 meters, was an important mean of entry to the city from the southern part of the Iberian Peninsula, as it is the only point to cross the river without the use of any type of boat. The Via Augusta, which is the longest Roman road in ancient Hispania, with an approximate length of 1,500 kilometers, ran from the Pyrenees to Cadiz, bordering the Mediterranean, passed through it. Puerta del Puente The Corran Gate is located in an enclave where Roman gates were once located, as well as Muslim ones. Bab al-Kantara, Bab al-Wadi, Bab al gatira or Bab al-Sura. In Roman times, it united the city with the Roman bridge and the Via Augusta. Torre de la Calahorra At the southern end of the bridge stands the Calahorra Tower, built in 1369 by Enrique II de Trastamara. It currently houses the Living Museum of Al-Andalus, an exhibition that shows the splendor of the three cultures that lived in Córdoba. From the roof of the tower, we can enjoy the best views of the historic center of Córdoba, the Most Cathedral and the Guadalquivir River. Templo Romano Architectural elements had already been found in the area, such as column drums, capital, etc., all made of marble, so the area was known as the Marmolejos. This area of Córdoba would be constituted between the 1st and the 2nd century as the provisional form of the Patrician colony, a title that the city received during the Roman domination. The material used was almost exclusively marble, from the columns to the walls through the roof. The quality of the marble and the size of it tell us that this construction was carried out by craftsmen with a very high qualification, placing the result at the level of the most beautiful buildings in the empire. Banos del Califa Next to the gardens of the Alcázar are the Caliph Baths, where its facilities allow us to get an idea of how sophistication and luxury was in everyday life for over a thousand years. Plaza de la Corredera In the Alcázar, the hall that houses authentic jewels stands out, such as the Roman mosaics recovered after the remodeling of the Corredera Square. There are more than 80 squares in Córdoba, and no two are the same. Toril Street entered the bulls in the Plaza de la Corredera. Since the 17th century, no bullfighting celebration has been held here. The Corredera Square is the only one in Andalusia that has this large size, rectangular configuration and arcades. La Mezquita In the 8th century, on the foundations of an ancient Visigoth temple, the first Amir of Córdoba, Abderrahman I, began the works of the mosque. They called him the Fugitive Prince 
as he had arrived in Cordoba after escaping the massacres suffered by the heirs of the Omeya dynasty in Syria. With this action, the emir would lay the foundations to make Cordoba the capital of Western Islam. The immense prayer room of the mosque is a forest of 850 columns of marble, jasper, and granite on which 365 horseshoes shaped in two colors arches are supported. It was the largest mosque of its time. The two most important cities in the Mediterranean were Cordoba, ruled by the Omeya Caliphs, and Constantinople of the Byzantine Emperors. Both powers collaborated in cultural projects, one of them being the decoration of the mirab of the mosque, where the Imam directed the prayer and next to which the Caliph site was located. Torre del Campanario The king, Fernando III, upon entering Córdoba, ordered that the mosque be consecrated and that a cross be placed on the highest tower. La Catedral During the coming centuries, the mosque was integrating Christian elements of worship, such as the side chapels, and finally, in the 16th century during the reign of Carlos V, the Cathedral of Santa Maria de Córdoba was raised inside. Medina Azahara According to a legend, the construction of Medina Azahara has its origin in a great love. But the official story suggests that the first independent caliph of Damascus wanted to show all the power of the caliphate, choosing an enclave on the outskirts of Córdoba and at the foot of Sierra Morena to build its city and palace. Medina Azahara translates from Arabic as glowing city. The architectural values of Medina Azahara are exceptional, as they allow us to know the architecture of the caliphate. Medina Azahara, shown for just 70 years, because after the fall of the Caliphate and the establishment of the Taifa Kingdoms, it was destroyed, sacked and abandoned. Currently, the city can be visited, and is being recovered and restored in the World Heritage Concession, although only 115 hectares have been excavated, corresponding to the 10% of the size of the city. El Barrio Judío Between the 10th and 15th century, it was the area where the Jews who came to Spain lived, and that is why it is called Juderia. This authentic labyrinth of alleyways is one of the most important places in Córdoba, as tradition and the flavor of its history still breathe. Located to the northwest of the Cathedral Mosque, the Jewish Quarter is one of the areas most visited by tourists, being places such as the Synagogue, the Municipal Soak, the House of Sephirat, or the Teveria des Square, among others. The tour of the Jewish Quarter practically merges with the rest of the historic center of Córdoba, one of the largest in Europe declared in 1994 by UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is worth getting carried away by craving the layout of its alleyways without looking at the map. Casa de las Cabezas According to the Romans, the Muslim leader Almanzor ordered Gonzalo Gustios, Count of Lara, to be locked in this house. The heads of the seven sons of the Count, who died in the battlefields of Soria, were hung in the seven arches of the alley next to the house. Maimonides Near the Jewish street stands the sculpture of the famous doctor and thinker Maimonides. We are in the heart of the Jewish quarter of Córdoba. The Jews, skilled merchants, carried out financial activities and an important part were artisans. The Jews did not have their own architectural style. The layout of the streets of the Jewish quarter is typical of Muslim urbanism, with narrow winding streets like the one we name next. Calleja de la Hoguera The alley of the bonfire leads from Céspedes Street, a few steps from the Cathedral Mosque, and reaches halfway to the Anes Street. With just two meters wide, it is a corner in which there are widening and narrowing, as well as changes of direction typical of the Arab urbanism. The entrance from the Céspedes Street, which is narrow, widens a few meters ahead. Then we cross an arch in its middle part on which the minaret of the Mosque of the Andalusians rises, a small quadrangular tower with open horseshoe arches on its sides and a hemispheral dome topped by a yamu, five balls of decreasing size. 
The mosque, which is accessed from this street, is created based on a small oratory from the 10th century. It has a small access patio and the liwan or prayer room, whose qibla faces south. Crossed the arch, a small portico with columns covered with covered ceilings connects with a small square with an orange tree in its corner. This square has its exit through a narrow passage no more than 2 meters, also covered that opens to a new square, which gives way to the Anis Street through a new narrow alley. La Sinagoga The Cordoba Synagogue is a Jewish temple located in the Jewish street of the Jewish quarter. Built in the Mudejar style, it is the only existing synagogue in Andalusia and one of the only three that are preserved in Spain from that time. The synagogue plant in Cordoba, like other contemporary synagogues, was largely affected by the restriction of Christian leaders. These limitations vary depending on the location of the synagogue and whether the use of the community in question enjoyed privileged status. The size of the synagogue was to reflect its humility and inferiority before the Catholic Church, although it depended on nearby Christian buildings in the area. To purify himself before the ceremonies, the Jew was completely submerged in the living waters of the Mikveh, where life annuls death. This source comes from an underground stream that could have been a Mikveh in the past. In this neighborhood, the complaint of subsequent detention of the Inquisition of more than 200 Jews are documented. They were accused of practicing Judaism in their private life. It should not be forgotten that the Catholic monarchs had decreed in 1492 the expulsion of the Jews who refused to convert to Christianity. The progressive archaeological tasting showed the appearance of a contemporary mikveh, a Jewish bath of running water in which the ablutions would take place, in addition to a Talmudic school that would turn the synagogue into a great religious complex. The remains have been protected and a pedestrian walkway has been built, waiting for a larger project for you to visit. Calle del Pañuelo This is the narrowest street in Córdoba. In its narrowest part, only a small piece of cloth could pass through, hence its name, although it is also said that here there was a trade of precious fabrics and silks with such high prices that you could only buy a small scrub or handkerchief. Calleja de las Flores The Flowers Street and its surroundings very close to the mosque has always been one of the busiest areas. The alleys remained open during the day and closed at dusk. The streets of Córdoba were like a great market. La Muralla Córdoba was a fully walled city and large walls of the remains of its fortification are still preserved. The walls suffered multiple sieges for centuries. La Puerta de Almodóvar, or the Almodóvar Gate, is still intact, flanked by a sculpture of Seneca that recalls that it was in the Roman area of the first century when that gate was opened. In the middle of 19th century, the medieval walls and gates were demolished one by one to expand the city and open roads that would facilitate traffic. Iglesias Fernandinas The longest siege was that of Fernando III, King of Castile and León, getting into the city after the surrender of the Muslims in 1236, when Christian temples began to be built throughout the city, today known as the Fernandine Churches. Cristo de los Faroles, or Christ of the Lanterns, is a sculpture located in the city of Córdoba and made in 1794 by the sculptor Juan Navarro León, being its promoter the Franciscan Capuchin Fray Diego José de Cádiz. Its name is due to the fact that it is illuminated by eight lanterns that surround it and give it its popular name. Palacio de Viana In the city, the great houses and palaces proliferated, among them the Viana Palace, an emblematic building in which five centuries of the history of Córdoba can be contemplated through its furniture and its magnificent gardens, twelve in total, among which highlights the Andalusia Garden, dedicated to wellness with a variety of aromatic and medicinal plants as well as exotic species from the most remote corners of the world. Palacio de la Merced Near the Plaza de Colón, we find this old Mercedarian convent, quarren seat of the Diputación de Córdoba, Córdoba Town Hall. 
It is a very unique building, representative example of the Cordoba Baroque. Built in two phases during the 18th century, it has a main church built in 1745 with excellent plasterboard and the best Baroque altarpiece in Cordoba. In its courtyard and rooms, the palace hosts throughout the year interesting national and international exhibitions organized by the Cordoba Town Hall. But although the palace building surprises when its Baroque beauty, the true jewel of the construction is the Church of La Merced, which is located in the center of the old convent and serves as a diving axis between the two cloisters that articulate the building. Los Patios Everyone in Cordoba proudly exhibits a way of living inherited from Roman constructions, a life that is done in community around beautiful courtyards, cared for and maintained by the neighbors themselves. Hanging or vertical gardens are more current. The Cordovan patios hold their annual contest to choose the best and most cared for. In those days, homes are open to the public to proudly show their beauty. This party is part of the intangible heritage of humanity. Life in the Cordovan courtyards, with its fountains and flowers, essentially defines the life of its inhabitants and the city itself. Houses open to life and its people, the sun and the air. Everything in Cordoba, each of its streets, squares, configures a huge open-air museum that we invite you to visit. <laughs>